Hello, my name is Jason Nemore Hardin, and I would like to invite you on this journey as I read excerpts through Alberto Zanini's A Panther Story. I'm going to start us off today by reading a synopsis of this journey we are set to embark on. Enjoy. Part 1, 1969. The United States is going through a complicated period. The national economy is beginning to show signs of a downturn after more than 20 years of industrial expansion. Since the middle of the decade, the nation has been buffeted by the winds of a new social consciousness that finds one of its greatest expressions in the civil rights movement of African Americans. The murders of Malcolm X in 65 in Harlem, of Martin Luther King in April of 68 down in Memphis, and two days later, that of Bobby Hutton of the West Coast Black Panthers increases the fear and raises the bar of self-awareness in the country's black communities, while the Ku Klux Klan is at the height of its notoriety. The controversial Nixon presidency takes the nation's anti-communist policies to new extremes. On the domestic front, law enforcement agencies, especially the FBI, are engaged in a ruthless repression of all the civil movements that are considered to be subversive. The ghettos of the major cities in the North, until then the destination of the internal immigration of African Americans who arrived from the southern states in search of jobs and guaranteed civil rights, are now on the verge of chaos. As the decade draws to a close, unemployment, Corruption, drug abuse, and widespread crime are the colors painted on the canvas of everyday life in the metropolitan suburbs. With a filthy and corrupt New York as the setting, here plays out the lives of the Devon brothers, cynical and disenchanted African-American hoodlums, never afraid to use a gun, who control the criminal underworld in Harlem in perpetual competition with the Italian-American mafia and that of Jalen Perry, a street-smart guy, like the Devons, with whom he grew up in the neighborhood. A young musician and activist committed to doing good for his community, Perry manages to escape an FBI roundup conducted under the aegis of a clandestine program called COINTELPRO, created by director J. Edgar Hoover for the sole purpose of averting by any means, legal or otherwise, the expansion of domestic political and protest movements. Part 2, 2021 A lot of water has passed under the bridge. Civil society organizations have taken on a role of oversight of the work of the institutions, which are required to provide a level of transparency unthinkable at the time of Jalen Perry's escape. A new FBI leadership officially unveils documents relating to many of its darkly covert operations of the past, including that of the 21, and instructs a number of retired agents to find the right way to make them available to the public. One of them, Frank Moore, an elderly, melancholic former FBI officer who just wants to close circles in his life and was in charge of one of the teams that pursued Jalen Perry in vain, proposes the creation of a project to the New York Public Library. Eddie Delgado, one of its executives, divisional manager, researcher, librarian, lab technician, and unlikely fundraiser, takes charge of its development and implementation. After various ups and downs, Eddie and his friend, Alexei Romanov, a second-generation Russian immigrant violinist, First violin in a Broadway orchestra, traveler, and tireless investigator will be able to reconstruct the story of Jalen Perry's escape from Harlem to Canada and from Chicago to Algeria and track him down on the remote beaches of Normandy. His story will be made available to the public through an exhibition in the Rose Room of the New York Public Library, funded by Raymond and Dora Delaney, a couple of wealthy white New Yorkers dedicated to philanthropy and adoptive parents of an African-American teen with neurological problems. Thank you for listening, 
and I hope you, like I, am looking forward to the next step on this journey through Alberto Zanini's A Panther Story.